I've got some stickers here. So what I'm going to do with these stickers is I'm going to put these stickers on different parts of my body that's okay for someone else to touch because it feels okay by me. Help Auckland's We Can Keep Safe program in action this morning at the Rumpus Room Daycare in Point Chevalier. Every Tuesday for five weeks, parents and their three to five year olds gather here to learn about body ownership, simple touching rules, how to say stop and tell an adult if something happens. All of that has to be done in a way that's age appropriate. I thought I'd bring a special friend of mine along to meet you. That's where Programme Director Jude Bishop brings in the help of a puppet named Toby. Yep, ready for action. Oh, whoa, look at all these cool kids, Jude. Are these the really cool ones you told me about? Yeah, they are. Whoa, hope they'd like to be my friends. Moira Jackson is a retired paediatric clinical psychologist and teacher, but today she's here in her other role as grandmother to Quinn. She says the programme is life-changing. My own children um, had this kind of support 40 odd years ago and I've been astounded that it's not in schools nationwide because it should be, it's absolutely brilliant. That's echoed by a full turnout today. If you're touched in a way that gives you a no feeling, what do you say in a good strong voice again? Stop, Stop it, it, I don't like it! Oh yeah! And if they don't want to listen, you can go away and tell the teacher. teacher or another grown-up. Head teacher at the Rumpus Room, Kalpana Prasad, says since they first ran the programme in 2021, there's been huge demand, with all parents signing up to take part this time. This is such a tender age for the children and then it's just something that um, really leaves an impression for, for a very long term in their lives. But despite its success for nearly 30 years, the programme created by psychologists now faces an uncertain future. It costs about $100,000 a year to run, with most of that coming from ACC since 2015. But since July this year, that's no longer the case. Fundraising manager Sarah McKenzie says it'll be difficult to find the funding as parents and preschools aren't in a position to foot the bill. But what we're finding is that I think there's like 280, 200, between 250 and 280 early childhood education centres in Aotearoa have closed over the last two years. Um, so we're seeing that they're not in a position to be funding this programme. The cost of living um, is obviously exceptionally high. Parents have been stung quite a lot, I think, with the costs as well of, of daycare and if they're wanting to get back into work, especially for single parent households. She says they've got funding to last the next few months, but after that they'll have to make a decision on whether they can keep going. A decision many are hoping it won't come to. This is fundamental to the kitty of skills that every child needs in, in its formative life. And I get really emotional about it because children are not getting it. They're not getting it. And then people like me have to sit in a therapy room uh, trying to unscramble. It will be devastating if this course can't run anymore. We would like it to be continuing for as long as possible, and um, especially because there's so much need for it. There will be communities who will be easily able to afford it, but we need to have it accessible to people who actually can't afford. I'm going to come and see you another day. Bye for now! In a statement, ACC says it continues to invest in child sexual abuse prevention and is currently funding five community-led initiatives that are developing meaningful and localised approaches to prevent child sexual abuse.